truck gets wrecked, the work stops. So we need to rush this truck back on the road with some body work and repair. Time to clock in on Truck U. Truck you today. We've got this 2003 Chevy Duramax diesel in the shop, and it's our buddy's work truck. It's a big bad truck, and apparently, it's got a little bit of a magnetic effect to oak trees. Man, it just wants to <laughs> suck them right into the back here. They're very common around here. They just jump out and slam into the back of your cars. They're everywhere. You have to look out for them. So with this thing being in here, he's not making any money. So we need to turn it around and get it back out there so he can go back to work. You know, but we've got some repairs we need to do. Yeah, you take a look at this, it's not the end of the world because the truck is still running great, all right? But there's a little bit of damage back here, so you got the tailgate here, the bumper, the light, and the fender. You know, while it's in here, he's also saying that he's got an issue with air conditioning, so we want to make sure that he's nice and cool in this truck, so while it's here, we'll fix that for him as well, but I'll start on that bumper. All right, man, we'll get him back on the road. Uh, there were a lot of bolts. It really took a long time. That did. All right. Most secure bumper ever. Bruno, be careful. We don't want to scratch this stuff. Yeah. There we go. Any more problems than we already have? I like fiberglass. You know, that's just so much easier to carry. Especially when you're doing all the heavy lifting. It is really light for as big as this. Look at that. Now, that's a good look. It's kind of a... Kind of a military theme on yeah. the side. Cool. All right, so we got this new piece from LMC Truck, direct replacement, and we can put this up here. And what we're gonna do is just make sure that everything fits up. We're just gonna take a quick look. Yeah, this stuff should line up pretty well. We wanna make sure that we don't have to do any kind of cutting, and all this stuff's gonna go on nice and easy, so our mounts will work this way. We can send it to the paint shop, knowing when he comes back, we can just snap it into place, and we're gonna be good to go. So I think this is a pretty good fit, man. Yeah, that'll lay in nice once we tighten everything down. So all that'll right, cool. be just fine. All right, so next up, during the disassembly process, we noticed that we had an issue with the light back here. Now, our buddy gave us a little heads up. He said he had a running light issue. But another thing we noticed was when I pulled this off, it was full of water. I mean, it was draining out. He probably had a cup of water in this thing, right? So that is not good. Water plus electricity, usually bad things happen. Now, we've got a new cover. That's an easy fix. The thing is, we want to make sure that our wiring is OK, because he said he had a running light that was bad. So that's one thing. So our harnesses are right here. And at first glance, so it's kind of obvious, you can see what the problem was, the two yeah. wires snapped. So we want to go ahead and make sure that, first of all, this plug's going to work, because it should be a pretty easy solder fix. So we'll plug these two wires in, should light up the bulb once we're all set. But if the plug is not good, it's not going to happen. So we've got our power probe here, and what's cool about this is, believe it or not, it's actually hooked to the battery up underneath the truck right now, and the leads are running all the way back here, so it makes life a whole lot easier oh. when you're trying to work on these things. The leads are 20 feet, and there's a 20-foot extension. So, I mean, on a long truck like this, we could wrap it around here if we <laughs> wanted to, because right now we got all the room in the world. If you're working on an RV or something, you know, and you got to go quite a ways, I mean, those long leads really, really make a big difference. Because if you come two or three feet short, ugh. Yeah, that's not fun. No. You know, so right now I'm plugged in into our probe we've got right here to the plug and it's saying that we've got continuity it's continuity ground so we flip the switch we're actually powering up the bulb so it's saying not only the bulb is good and our little plug-in is good so all we should have to do is make some solder connections and that one's okay but you look at the other two connectors one looks good one not so good bro yeah, I think that's where the water was, right? Yeah, yeah, it was probably sitting full of water. So what we can do is take the power probe, put it inside, and you can see right now we're getting continuity to ground. So that's, that's saying right. that basically it should work once we put power to it. On this other one, do the same thing, and we are getting a whole lot of nothing. So we either got a problem in the wires, or I'm going to say because of all this corrosion, it's probably going to be this harness itself. We'll get rid of this connector, and I think we should be okay on that end. The power probe makes life easy for all things as far as diagnosing any kind of electrical problem or just finding it real quick. That's what the name of the game is. So we're going to have some fun with the light here real quick, too, because we can check these bulbs. Now I've got a good ground right there with the green light. Boom, I can send power to it. Light works. Nice. That's good. Look at that. Look how shaky I am. I mean, you don't want me performing surgery, you know? No, you'd be awful at that game. What is that, concentration or where the one they pulled a little bone out? That would be operation. Operation, but same thing. Counting? Yes. You, know, you don't concentrate well either.
back a repair to our Silverado are well underway you can see here we're missing this whole back panel but it's off getting painted so it's gonna look good it's just gonna take a couple days for it to come in we've got our wiring issues done our tail light cover on and our rear bumper just came in so let's get that thing in place all right now we got a complete bumper replacement kit you know you take a look at this and the bumper is actually made in a couple of different pieces so if you really only mangled up one corner of it or maybe chewed up the top skin you could get replacements just for that but he did some pretty good work to his, so. I'll start working on this. Okay, that leads us to the next piece that we're replacing, which is right here, the brand new tailgate. Now, obviously this one looks better because the big difference is this, right there. None of that, okay? So we got some hardware to put onto this and we can put the hardware on the side, but this is going to the paint shop as well. So we don't want to put the handle on yet. And we got this new trim piece for the top. That's what's going on the later model Silverados. Just a nice looking piece. It's gonna look good when it's all done. But this is going to the paint shop with the rest of it. It's gonna look good. Ugh. So we're inside the cab because we need to take a look at the fan blower motor. What's happening is when you flip on the switch, this thing vibrates and the faster you spin it, the more it vibrates. And you don't want to have an issue later on while it's in the shop, we want to go ahead and address it. Now if you pull the fan out, sometimes a visual inspection will tell you a whole lot. You get this thing out of the way and you can see right here, man, there are a ton of leaves and a ton of debris all sitting off to one side in this little fan. It's kind of like if you've got a bunch of clothes wet inside the washing machine or the dryer, it's all side loaded when it starts to spin around in a circle, that thing will jump all around the place and vibrate. It's exactly what's happening right here. But since we got the fan out of the way, we want to go ahead and make sure that all our wiring is good as well. So when we put it back in place, everything will work right. So we've got our power probe, and first thing you'll notice is, man, you don't even need a flashlight with this thing because it's got these two LED lights up front, so you can see what you're doing. You'll notice right here, there's a controller right here that we need to move out of the way because it's basically going to change the signal to a digital one, and we're not going to get quite the settings we need. So we'll take that out of the way, and we can get our readings. So first of all, the power probe is going to tell us if we've got a ground. Boom, we're good right there. Then we go to the hot side and see if we've got power, and we do. Where this thing gets really cool is we can adjust the, the th voltage threshold setting on this thing to within two tenths of a volt. What that's gonna allow us to do is check the fan switch to see if that's working. So what we do is we plug it into that middle setting right here. If you can hear that right there, that's telling us that basically what's happening with it's a PWM valve that's cutting off and on to control the fan speed. So it's at a slow pace right now, cutting in and out. Now I'm gonna reach over and jump up the fan. As you crank up the speed of the fan, you can hear how much faster it's cutting in and out. So that's working. The faster the fan's working, the faster this thing's beeping, which we know that our switch is okay. So that's pretty cool. Just another cool feature of the power probe. So I think we're all good on this end. What we need to do is simply do that. And I think we're gonna be okay. We mentioned earlier there was an AC leak. Well, we dove in there and checked it out. We got pretty lucky. The problem was right there on the connection on the condenser. So we worked an O-ring into the equation. No more leak. That's handled. Now, if you are going to take your vehicle to get the AC system serviced, they're probably going to use a tool like this. It's the AC service machine from Mac Tools. If you own a company that does AC work, this is a nice tool to have too. I realize most of us aren't going to have this in our personal garage, but here's the deal. With one connection on the high and low end, it totally recovers all of the refrigerant. It evacuates the whole entire system and vacuums it out. Then it recharges it to the right level. So this machine is smart too because it does a lot of things and it takes a lot of the work out of it as far as you and I are concerned, right? Because if the refrigerant gets low that's in here, it tells you, it sends up a warning for that. There's an automatic air purge right there. Now, when you go to vacuum the system, it defaults at 15 minutes, but let's say you need a little bit more than that. You want to make sure the system is good and evacuated. You can override that up to 99 minutes. So basically all the work is done and this smart little tool right here from Mac Tools, it's the air conditioning service machine from Mac Tools. So now when somebody says, oh, all that AC work is so complicated, now you know better. Now let's go fire this up.
So here's the deal. Today, people are holding on to the cars a lot longer than they have in the past. I believe the national average is now over 10 years. And that's a good thing because people are saving money on car payments. The downside is, well, the engine starts to lose some of its horsepower, some of its sealing ability, and its efficiency over time because you get carbon deposits inside the engine. But we've got a way to help bring it back to life, so to speak, with ZMAX. Now, we've worked with ZMAX for quite a while around here, and we thought it'd be pretty cool to do an experiment. So we took this old truck, tore the engine down, took a look at everything, put it all back together, ran ZMAX in the engine for a while, and today and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to take a look at the positive benefits of running ZMAX in an engine like this. You know, for those of you that don't know, ZMAX is a microlubricant that works by penetrating into the metal. So when you pour it into your fuel system, you pour it into your engine, what it's going to do is penetrate into the metal and lift some of those carbon deposits, essentially sealing your engine up again. With your engine having a better sealing capacity, what it's going to do is increase your fuel economy and give you back some needed power. Hey, now with that valve cover out of the way. This looks good and clean, but we need to go deeper and we need to get at more pieces and parts on the inside of this engine. And that's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. So we're going to take a look at not only how ZMAX can breathe new life back into an engine like this, but how it can also extend the life of a brand new engine as well. This tip is brought to you by ZMAX. Performance you can feel. Welcome back. We're continuing to work on this 2003 Silverado work truck. Now, if you remember, our buddy backed into a tree, or the way he tells that the tree backed into him, however it is, he did a bunch of damage in the back. We want to make sure he doesn't pull into anything and do any damage up front. What we're going to do to help him out is clear up these headlight lenses. As you can see, over time, this is more common than not. You've got dull, yellow, hazy headlight lenses. So what we've done is we've taken the Blue Magic Headlight Lens Restore and we polished out this side on the side of the tape. So I'm gonna do a little reveal here and show you the difference. Boom, and you can see we've got the clear side, we've got the hazy side, and now we've got optical clarity. So you can see we're going down the road, people can see you. Now the important part of this little kit from Blue Magic is you follow it up with the headlight lens sealer. Once I get this side done, the sealer is going to seal in that optical clarity. You see when you, you buff out these headlight lenses, you remove that UV protection. So it'll fade in yellow quickly. You put the headlight lens sealer from Blue Magic in, you're going to seal in that optical clarity, you're going to seal in that protection. It won't fade, it won't yellow out from the sun. All we have to do now is buff out this side, spray in our headlight lens sealer, and we are good to go. Next up are several components from the Edge accessory system from Edge Products. That's good because he already runs an Edge CTS programmer. Everything is compatible. Everything's going to communicate. What's nice about this is the fact that it's stackable, all of the components that you use. So here's the wire that comes off the back side of the programmer. And one of the components we want to put in is this EGT sensor. So that's clocked. You can't plug it in wrong. So that's going to plug in right there. And like I said, it's stackable. So we're also going to put in a turbo timer. So that's going to plug right in to the back side right there. Now, if we want to put in any more components, they just keep stacking right there. But that's going to be it for today. So we'll put this little plug on the end. That way that keeps everything clean. Now, the wires will be, of course, run all up underneath the dash. Everything will be hidden. But that takes us up to the front where we can take a little closer look at what's happening with this turbo timer. And we need to get in there and pull out this 10 amp fuse right here. Now, the issue is we get this out of there. We want to make sure that this side with the wire coming out of this fuse is on the hot side of the fuse. So we get in here with our power probe. There's our ground side. There's our hot side right there. So we know that this fuse is going to go in this way. Now, like I said, Let's talk about turbo timers for a second, because in my humble opinion, everybody ought to have one. So let's say you're driving down the road, pulling a heavy trailer, and your turbo is running hot, but now you're thinking, I'm starving. I gotta grab something to eat. So you pull over to the local choke and puke, you get out of the truck, you shut everything down, and you shut your turbo down when it was really hot. What's gonna happen is the oils that are inside of there are gonna get coked up, and eventually that could lead to a premature turbo failure, which could get really, really expensive. Where the turbo timer kicks in is you turn your ignition off, pull the key out, you walk into the restaurant, everything's good, but your truck is still running. And the timer is going to just let that turbo run and let the engine keep running until that turbo comes down in temperature and gets nice and cool, and then it safely shuts off. You're inside eating, you don't even have to worry about it. So like we said, the edge accessory system, the turbo timer, is a must-have, especially for a work truck like this. Let's go inside the Duplicolor garage. Duplicolor, yes you can, in your garage. 
Today we're back out here at our buddy's ranch. We love this place. One of the cool things is all these guys have Jeeps out here and they're always playing around and having a good time. We thought it'd be cool to come back out here into the garage and do a little work ourselves. So we want to paint this brake caliper. Now the cool thing about painting a brake caliper is it's a really easy job to do. Now, the good thing is once it's done, you can really notice that difference, especially if you look up close and personal, it's one of those things that really pops. So what we're gonna use today is the caliper paint from Duplicolor. Now it's a really easy thing to do. Cool thing is if this caliper is off, you just hit it with the aerosol can and you're done. But we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna pull it off. We're gonna leave it on and we can do that with the brushing system right here. The kit has everything that you need to get the job done from the caliper cleaner to the paint. You've got tape to where you can tape it off. You've got the mixing stick, the brush. Everything you need is here. Now, when you apply this, you'll notice it goes on pretty thin. So you're gonna to wanna to put on multiple coats and give each coat about 15 to 20 minutes in between. A couple of thin coats and this job is done and it looks fantastic. It really matches up with the rest of the Jeep. Now think about this, as the tire's spinning, the brakes are clamping, there's a lot going on right here and things can get really hot. If you paint a caliper with a paint that's not specifically designed for a high heat application, it's just gonna flake off and go away and it's not gonna stay looking good. The good news is on the Duplicolor caliper paint, it's made with ceramic resins that are good for up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. It's also gonna resist chemicals, brake dust, and chipping. So it's gonna stay looking this good for a long time. Once again, keep in mind two easy ways to do it with the aerosol can or the brush on system like we did right here. And it looks awesome. This segment of Truck U is brought to you by CRC Industries, makers of Brake Clean, the original aerosol brake parts cleaner. Recently, one of our projects was a 1985 Chevrolet C10 pickup, and all the pieces and all the parts that we got for that project came from the guys at Brothers Truck Parts. Now, they're your number one source for all the parts you need for Chevy and GMC trucks from 1947 to 1987. Whether you're looking for a very cool billet pedal assembly like this, or just about anything for your Chevy truck, you can go online, you can call their 1-800 number, or get yourself one of these free catalogs. You can find from the smallest parts like these, or big bumpers and body panels we get from these guys. You need everything you need and you can get it quick because these guys are located right in the Midwest and usually ships to you in one or two days and that is awesome. Hey, the guys that work at Brothers Truck Parts are enthusiasts. These guys eat, sleep, and breathe Chevy trucks. So whatever you're doing, any kind of restoration project, like we said on the Chevy truck from 1947 to 1987, the guys at Brothers Truck Parts are going to hook you up with everything you need. Yep. This is the Magnaflow Black Series High Performance Exhaust System. So you get all the benefits of an upgraded exhaust system, better flow, more horsepower, all that stuff is great, right? We want all that, but we also want stuff to look cool. And take a look at this. Boom, I love the way that blacked out look. Yeah, that murdered out look is really big right now. People are even doing it on the wheels. You know, I've got black wheels in my race car, and a great way to tie it all in right now is with a high temp black ceramic coating exhaust. It ties the whole look together. That finish is gonna stay looking good for a long period of time. And you know, you're still gonna get all the benefits you come to learn and love from Magnaflow. You've got that great performance, that great look, and that great sound. Now you've got that great black look as well. It's the Magnaflow Black Series Performance Exhaust System, and it looks evil in a good way. This is G oil from Green Earth Technologies and what it is, it's a bio-based, full synthetic, green, high performance motor oil. And first and foremost, it is a high performance motor oil. You know, this stuff will give you maximum protection and performance in your everyday driver, just like it does for the guys in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. You know, they're running wide open on the ragged edge for four or 500 miles at a time. It's protecting those engines. It'll protect your everyday driver. You know, beyond the performance aspect, what I like about it is it's grown and made right here in the United States with um, domestically grown and sourced fatty base oil. So this stuff made here in the USA, Good enough for me, man. Yeah, very cool. It's what they call ultimate biodegradable, and it scores a zero on toxicity, and it's environment friendly. It's the G-Oil from Green Earth Technologies. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. All right, Matt, good. Gotcha, brother. Nice work, buddy. Man, I love the new finish on this thing. It looks good, huh? I think it looks fantastic. Hey, welcome back, guys. Now, we are just wrapping up our work on this 2003 Silverado work truck for our buddy. Now, if you remember, he crashed up the back pretty badly, so we had to put a new bumper on it, a new side panel. We've got a new rear lift gate for it. Matt did some stuff with a turbo timer, 
changed the blower motor and the fan, or we fixed it, yep. and fixed the front headlight. A lot of stuff happened in a very short period of time. The whole idea is when this truck is down, he's down, he's not making any money. The last piece of the puzzle in terms of the transformation back to a work truck, though, was the Fleet West load and go. This thing's back into place, and now he can go back out on the road and make some money. I think the coolest thing about the Fleet West box is the fact that besides all the obvious things, you look at all the storage that you can have, oh, yeah. is the fact that it really gets rid of the need to have a dedicated work truck. You don't have to have two trucks now, right? One big box truck for work and one truck to haul everything and play in. You can have the, all the benefits of having one truck, basically, which is the big benefit of saving a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, look at the compartments in this thing. This is a huge slide-out drawer. I mean, you could put bodies in here if you wanted to. <laughs> you know, it rolls on and rollers nice and easy. It shuts, boom, safe and secure from prying hands, all your tools, all your supplies, yep. and it locks in place. So the elements and other people can stay out of your stuff, which is really nice. Now, you notice the finish on this box. This is what they call the Sportsman. It's a new model for them, and it's great as a fact it's a little more versatile. It'll fit on a half-ton truck as well as this big full-ton truck, but the finish on it's really great. It's got that black look on the black truck, and it's that rugged, you know, truck bed liner stuff. You match that with the diamond plate, and this thing's pretty much indestructible. You know what I like is to always tell the story about the guy that had the work truck with this box in the back of it. He crunched up the whole front end, right? Yeah. Truck wasn't running anymore, but he didn't lose any time at all on work because he just rented another truck, brought that truck over. They moved the box from the crunched up one to the truck that ran, but he didn't miss out on any work, man. That's the deal. Yeah, that's the whole key to this thing. You know, this is a, a work truck during the week for our buddy on the week Weekends, though he uses this truck to pull his toys it's a fifth wheel hauler you know takes this thing off with a forklift or he's even got those optional jacks and boom he's out having fun with the truck on the weekends that's what's really cool you know how it goes the wife's like I want to go out to the Japanese steakhouse but I don't want to take the work truck you're like okay honey boom you move the box off now she's happy because you're rolling down the road and you don't have all the tools going with you this is gonna save your marriage I'm telling you <laughs> All right, I got it, man. Finally, we are down to the last job of the day. This is cool. It's the backup camera, which is another neat product from Edge Products. And this is hopefully going to help him become a little bit more of a safe driver. Right? Yeah, it's a nice, easy add-on. You've got one connection here. This will run right up to that Edge CTS. Then you've got the harness where it's simply got a plug-in here for your relay and one to your chassis ground. And that is it, man. We are done with this work truck. <laughs> we have done a lot of work to this truck. Hopefully, he's going to be thrilled with it. And between you and I, hopefully, he doesn't come back around for a while, right? Right? Yeah. And he can avoid any um, incidents, maybe? Jumping trees, you know yeah, how it anything is. anything like that. All right, All right we're that out. wraps it up. We'll see you next time right here on Truck U.